Ah, uh, hello, Tara. Hello, how are you? What the f was that? Things happened. And fire. <clears throat> and things. <laughs> I mean, are we going to talk about the things? Because the spoiler police exist. They do. They'll come for you in the night. They will. Talking Game of Thrones, by the way. Like, yeah. like ice zombies. Like Trogdor. Yeah. I, it was. That's a spoiler. Things. It, it was. the peasants. <laughs> Did you not see the Trogdor gif I posted last night? <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't the first one. Uh, it's 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 yeah. It's it's. Here's my thing with this season. I feel somebody put it really well. Somebody on Reddit. Somebody on Reddit said a good thing. I know. They said basically George R. R. Martin. It seems like we know that seasons ago he gave the showrunners the outline mm -hmm. of how he wanted everything to run. You know the high points. It seems like they just filmed that and didn't bother filling in all the nuance. Like yeah. I don't mind the places the story's going. But I would like some fill in with the nuance, like literally all Cersei's done this season is look out a window and drink wine. That's all she's done. Yeah. Like, where is her ruling anything? Like, she doesn't have a small council, but what like, what is that like? What's life like in King's Landing right Probably now? Probably pretty shit. But like, I just think it needed room to breathe. Yeah, it's well, like George R. R. Martin has said to really do his story justice, they needed at least 10 seasons. And I guess HBO order offered these guys everything, like however many seasons you want. Here's all the money. And they were like, no, we want to do other. Shit. Yeah, like Confederate, which right. is going to be atrocious. Which but fine. if you want to do your racism show, <laughs> I'm sure there's a head writer or somebody who would have loved to take over and really land this plane. Yeah, they want they like, want to do the racism show because they own all the copyright because it's an yeah. original. There, so yeah. But like, I don't have a problem with the story points. I just think it all yeah. needed room to breathe. Yes. Like the Night King should have been more than a one episode thing. We should have seen the siege at the last hearth. We should have seen them run into wildlings on the way down. You like? It's like the difference between taking a plane to Disneyland and taking the bus. I mean, the bus is a lot more unpleasant. It's like reading the Cliff Notes versus reading the book. Right now, we're we're reading the Cliff Notes, and we're just getting so this happened, and then this happened, and this happened, but without the nuance. Well, we're gonna. It's all wrapping up in a week, and oh god, if the leaks are correct, oh god. If the leaks are correct, that shit is dark. Yes, we'll, we'll be dark. Oh, fuck you too. hell. Like, we all knew it wasn't going to be a happy ending. But fuck you too. hell. That's not bittersweet. That's not bittersweet no, at all. It's dark. It's just like, you know, you you go to Starbucks and you're like, excuse me, I asked for, for the, the sweet with a little I bitter. I asked for a Pacino and you gave me the little cakes that come out of the espresso machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, Team Sansa. let's get on to more and more stupid stuff. You know that there's not the only Funko Pop they have done of Sansa is when she dyed her hair brown, and I'm pissed about it. They did a whole new series of Funko Pops this year. Did they do a Sansa? No, they did not. The only Sansa Stark Funko Pop is when she's a fucking brunette. And I'm angry about it. I want my Sansa. You know what they're going to do. It's going to be a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. <sighs> I want my Sansa. All I don't right. want a stupid Daenerys. Intro time. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go off on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And um, <laughs> we quite often make the point that uh, the police are not customer service. No. 
except in one very specific instance. If you want them to take you to jail... <laughs> that is a service they will provide, yes. They can fucking do that. Florida man driving Cadillac from sunroof says he'd rather go to jail than back to his wife. Well, that's a country song if I've ever heard one. Oh, we got to see this here. There he is. Look at him. Not a hand on the wheel either. Wow. That's not safe. Titanic music intro here, you know. I'm the king of Florida. <laughs> Uh, Lakeland, Florida, video released by Florida Highway Patrol shows a man driving westbound on I-4 while sitting on top of his sunroof. Plus, police arrested Leonard Olson, 70, after an off-duty Hillsborough County Sheriff's deputy recorded video of the man act man's actions and notified Florida Highway Patrol. While fi following the driver, the off-duty deputy says the vehicle driven by Olson was going more than 100 miles per hour. One I'm point, impressed a Cadillac sedan can go that fast. One point, the off-duty deputy observed the driver stand up and sit on his open sunroof while the vehicle was still traveling westbound. Troopers pulled over Olson on US-98 and asked him about reports. Uh, Olson initially said he didn't know about that. Olson told deputies that he wanted to turn himself in. When asked why, the report claims Olson stated his wife Quote, treats me like a servant, and she's the mistress, and I'm tired of this shit. Olsen stated he would rather go to jail than go back home. Olsen was then taken into custody. You know, you could just move out. <laughs> you could. Jail's not going to be better. And it's not going to be more fun. It's Here's, here's kids, everyone, and th th no matter how old you get in life, I want you all to learn this very important lesson, okay? Remember this. This is probably the most important thing I'm ever going to tell you. It's never too late in life to get a divorce. No. No, it's not. You can just leave. It's you... complicated. Like, I'm not saying divorce is easy. I've done it. It sucks. Yeah. It sucks warm sick through a short straw. It's not fun. Better than jail. Better than jail whole lot more you feel a whole lot more relieved after a, a divorce than you do going to jail yeah because it's it's like i thought it would be a nice way to praise god for a minute that's a quote from this yeah i know fucker. i god didn't want you to do that god doesn't want you on the highway doing this no he doesn't oh, no at no point does God want you to act like a fucking moron? I'm Jesus just, didn't die so you could be a moron. It's it's more of a relief to get a divorce than to pee in a urinal with no seat. A metal urinal where everyone can watch you. Or a toilet, Do rather. Do normally have seats? A toilet. toilet. I'm, I'm oh, just, okay. Because I'm like, I've never... I don't spend a lot of time in men's bathrooms. I said the wrong word, Tara. Can we move I, on? I, no, I didn't know. Maybe they redesigned them. I didn't know. I don't I don't hang out in the men's bathroom. I used to date a guy who used to drive with his... He prided himself on his ability to drive with his knees. <clears throat> Do you drive with your knees? That's not safe, Nash. Who's like, oh, I work landscaping, and you got to eat lunch while you drive. So you hold your sandwich, and you drive with your knees. I I don't do that anymore. It's not safe. No, it's not. I've got, okay, this next one, this is going but to... Even, yeah, he wasn't driving with his knees. Th this, this is the best headline we're going to get all week, probably all month, probably, maybe all year. Um, it comes from a wonderful website called The Register which uh, is probably the best tech news website in the world. And I don't know why they picked up this story, 
But I'm glad they did because they gave us this majestic headline. Thomas the Wank Engine. <laughs> London Rail Passengers played porn grunts over PA system. Except they literally did it the old BBS version of porn. Mind the fap. <laughs> Commuters on London's Wandsworth Clapham service last Friday morning had yet another reason to awkwardly avoid each other's gazes as grunts and groans from what sounded like a pornographic film oozed out of the trains to noise system. Pastor Paul Brunton did what any self-respecting citizen would do and uploaded the footage to Twitter. Shall we shall we listen? Shall oh, we yeah. experience this together? Oh, let's let's do this. Let me get my uh let's get this set up here. I gotta unmute some stuff. Okay. I love the lady just laughing her ass off. <laughs> Is that coming from the driver? A fellow traveler could be heard asking. At least they wouldn't need to be relieved at the end of their shift. <laughs> you see why I love this website? Incorrectly identifying the rail network responsible, Brunton then, tang tr then tagged Transport for London. Um, Transport for London responded, Oh dear, thankfully not one of our trains or drivers, not our circus, not our monkeys. Um, they didn't say that, I said that. Um, no, that otter belongs to Southwestern Railway, which rushed out a statement saying, Southwestern Railway has a policy of blocking inappropriate material, including pornographic websites, on its onboard and station's Wi-Fi services. We are investigating this incident to establish how material was broadcast on our service. Well, the fucking train driver had it on his laptop and left the fucking intercom on, you idiots. <laughs> But the thing is... Case closed! You don't know that he was watching porn. That could be a home movie that's saved on the laptop. Ain't no way to block that. Or you just download the porn at home and you take it with you. Yeah, that too. I... 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 Mm, oh, man. When will they... That's, that's just one of those incidents that no one wants to be there. Yeah. And it's, nobody wants to be the one to point it out either. They're all like, are you going to, are you, are, you're, you know what? Let's all just live with it. <laughs> porn is one of those things that it's, it's. Nobody wants to knock on that door. Porn is strangely like much, many other things that regard sexuality and that even experiencing porn in a communal setting requires consent. Yeah. It's not like, you know, someone's got their boombox turned up a little loud. Yeah, you don't want to have porn just, like, thrust upon you unexpectedly. I mean, it's not like someone's got... Porn. It's not like someone's, like, cranking Beastie Boys and you're right. you're kind of... You're in a different mood that day. It's it's porn. It's 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 a sexual thing, and that means everyone involved... And not everybody likes the same kind of porn. No, they don't. And, like, not everybody likes the same kind of music, but it's different, like... I really... You know, I really like country, but these people are blessed in the Beastie Boys. That's different than I'm really into bondage porn, and this guy is playing a video where a chick gets waterboarded. Like, it's different. <laughs> and yeah, that's a porn genre. I found that out by accident, and I was a little disturbed. Oh my God. Okay, so people are, are extolling me to read the last paragraph. All right, let me see here. Uh, the three-minute journey from Wandsworth Town to Clapton Junction takes place on a stretch of rail line that was open between 1838 and 1863. It's not known whether the pastor barked. Uh, it's not known where, where the pastor barked, and even less clear where the announcer or guard, or ultimately, got off. But Shepherd's Bush, Cockfosters, and Mudshoot are all very possible. <laughs> 
half of the English countryside was named by 13-year-old boys. <laughs> Where are you going this afternoon? Oh, I'm popping up to Cockfosters. Yeah, like... Okay. Have some spotted dick. They yeah, dick. we had a shit weekend. We were lost in Shepherd's Bush for hours. Just hours. Couldn't find our way out of there. And then we thought we were finally at our exit, and it was mud shoot. It was fucking mud shoot. All right. Next up in our continuing series, YouTube was a mistake. I say this uploading to YouTube. Fucking YouTube pranksters. Yeah. This is... This is an entire genre. I'm sorry. We have abused the fuck out of it. It needs to be pulled the Christ down in total from YouTube. And here's another wonderful example of why. These people just do not have a throttle on what they do to other people. Just none. It's wide open. Dan's you... ancestors probably named all the towns in England. <laughs> Probably. These YouTubers are under fire for a quote-unquote prank they pulled on unsuspecting Walmart employees. I'm already mad. A YouTuber with over a million subscribers is receiving backlash online after she filmed a quote-unquote prank where she went to a Texas Walmart store, pretended to be a high-level executive, and told employees they were fired. Yeah, you can go right the head and fuck yourself. <clears throat> Lauren Love runs several YouTube channels with her partner, Joel Ashley. Their main account, Laurel and uh, Joel and Laurel TV, has 1.3 million subscribers. They also have a personal YouTube channel as well as a separate account under, quote, the Ashley family. Oh, that's so nice. You know, they can they have their nice, wonderful afternoon when they're not fucking torturing retail employees. What the fuck? One point three million. These are the people that have Instagram accounts for each of their kids, and their dog, and the dog. The dog has an Instagram mm -hmm. account. And I want to side note: people have often extolled me, uh, Nash. You, you you should get Grady a, a Twitter account. You should make a Twitter account just for Grady. No. Yeah, people have said that to me, and I'm like, no, they can't type. <laughs> I have considered doing a separate Instagram for the cats. But I, I don't post that much of my own, so whatever. Pets, I feel like it's le it's actually less weird because they're never going to need their identity later in life. No, the pet, they're not going to give a shit. The you know. pets are never going to be trying to date and have to worry about that cute picture of you po of you that you posted of them with spaghettios on their face. Like, right. your kids someday are going to fucking hate you. People, people from birth have an internet presence. Yeah. Like, I know people that have a baby, and immediately they make a Facebook page for the baby, and I'm like... But anyway, this this one... This is kind of like, for the longest time, we, we did have prank shows long ago. Ever heard of Candid Camera? Yeah, punked. We had, we had prank shows, but there was always a rain on them, and that rain was the network lawyers who were there to say, if you can't do that, we'll get sued. Yeah. YouTube, we have a bunch of people who get very famous very quickly and have no one to tell them, please don't do that. That's not good for you. Yeah, we now have people that you can you can become famous with zero accountability and with nobody to tell you no. <clears throat> not even and YouTube. No. And the only people you have to answer to are your sponsors, whether they be on Patreon or corporate. Or your viewers. And that's the other thing. What this has done is this has kind of opened a Pandora's box because we had those old shows, but they were restrained. Now we have these new shows where anything fucking goes and people it's 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 like it's like porn, but for fucking violent horror. Yeah. Just awful. The the the, the septic tank of the human soul. It's porn, but for being terrible. Right. Exactly. That's, that's what this is. And that's... We have Game of Thrones for that. With better production values, I might add. Yes. Say what you will. The shit looked beautiful. Mm-hmm. But just don't. And, and retail employees. You can tell which motherfuckers never worked retail in their goddamn life. Yep. 
if you have ever worked retail, you walk into a store and you have a, you like, oh, you poor sons of bitches. I am going to make yeah. your life as easy as possible while I'm here. I'm going to get I my won't shit. I will go to a place like less than half an hour to closing unless I literally do know exactly what I need, mm -hmm. exactly where it is, mm -hmm. and have fucking cash on hand. Like, I don't order milkshakes half an hour before closing at nope. McDonald's. <laughs> nope. <laughs> like, and the people who have never worked retail are like, look at all these poor bastards. This is funny. I'm going to mess with them. That's their job. That's like their job. Just to put up with my shit. That's their job. She, this, she left one of the fucking employees in tears because guess what? She needs the job because yeah. health care. People don't work at Walmart because it's fun. No. I mean, I'm sure somebody out there does. I'm sure somebody works at Walmart just because they're insane and they really like it. I'm going to go ahead and guess that the vast majority of people working at Walmart or anywhere in the retail industry aren't doing it for the love. No. It's for that fucking paycheck. This, this that is too small. This definitely falls under. I, I, this is why I made the show. What the fuck is wrong with you? Leave these people alone. Assholes. <sighs> oh. Thing, thing it like. She's also a fucking idiot because. Retail jobs are pretty usually stringent about not doing this shit in front of customers. They don't want the customers to know how the sausage is made. No. no. They're not about to fire you on the sales floor unless you're actively taking a shit on the sales floor. Uh Oh. Well, we have more assholes. I, I don't even I don't even know what to say about this. Well, I will have things to say about it, but you'll have to give <laughs> you'll got to give me I, a I'm gonna go ahead and guess it's going to involve fuck. You'll give me got to give me a minute. Pennsylvania man accused of flushing grandparents ashes down toilet. Authorities say a Western Pennsylvania man flushed his grandparents' ashes down a toilet after his mother kicked him out of her house. Tribune Review reports that Thomas Wells was arraigned Monday on two counts of abuse of a corpse. Yeah, guess what? If you fuck around with ashes... Yeah. Uh, and criminal mischief charge. Uh, McNeese, McKeesport police say the 33-year-old Pittsburgh... 33? 33-year-old Pittsburgh man... to say, like, 19. <clears throat> nope. 33-year-old Pittsburgh man had been staying with his mother for a brief time before she asked him to leave last September. His mother told police in early February that a relative told her Wells had flushed her parents' ashes before he left. Ashes were kept in a box set up with a memorial in the mother's bedroom. Now, I'm not dunking on the guy because he's 33 living with his parents because no. the economy sucks and a lot of people have to move back home. It's the hissy fit. It's 33 is old enough to fucking not do that. You want to know how they, 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 were, they were tipped off to this? Authorities say Wells denied flushing the ashes during a conversation with his mother, but she claims waiter Le Wells later told her, said, later said he would flush her remains down the toilet. So he already is established to his mom that flushing people's remains was on his mind. So you pretty much have just drawn a beeline to yourself in the suspects category. Yeah. Yeah. Why why would you even say that? Why it's like saying, "Wow, I'm not going to, you know, steal a million dollars today with this gun and this mask." That's a <laughs> funny thing to say. I can't like somebody flushed miracles ashes down the toilet. I can't even imagine. Like I think he would go John Wick. <laughs> We had we had all his coworkers. I know exactly the story you're about. We had all his coworkers <laughs> over for a barbecue, and one of them had this very cute two-year-old boy. And our house isn't super childproof because we don't have kids. Yeah. So we're always like, "Your children are welcome, but you're gonna have to keep an eye on them because we're not childproofed at all. We have a lot of sharp corners and breakable shit." Well, I turned around at one point, and this kid is like shaking 
the, the little wooden box that Miracle is in, like a maraca, because the, the ashes are making noise. And I'm like, oh dear. And I'm like, I don't want to panic. I don't want to handle this tactfully. So I, you know, I grab his arm and I'm like, just, there's, there's, there's a dead cat in there. <laughs> And she's, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I just don't want your son to have cat ashes all over him. <laughs> I think that would be awkward for everybody. All right, two things. Two things to comment on that. Number one, that is the most hilariously awful thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and number two, how the fuck do you have a, a, a story with ashes? In reg- how the how serendipity? How the fuck? <laughs> I've lived my whole life in preparation for this gig, Nash. There's always a goddamn anecdote. Like Arya fucking Stark. I've been training for this since season one. (laughs) It's a two-year-old shaking the cat's ashes like a maraca. Luckily the box was sealed, because I'm just picturing it like bursting open and ashes everywhere. (laughs) That's that's the end of the party right there. And scene. That is awful. I love it. I hate it and I love it. We could just put down <sighs> the dead cat. Thank you. Miracle would be so fucking furious too. That's what I'm picturing. Like yeah. this little ghost cat, like <laughs> how dare you? Moving right along. Uh we have a weird situation in America right now in which we have when it, in regards to marijuana, we kind of have this patchwork of laws across yeah. the entire from state to state. From city to city, it's all a question of it's kind of legal here, but under these rules, or it's completely we still legal. Can't or how fucking puritanical we want to be about it. So I can understand there's going to be issues where people go from a jurisdiction where marijuana is legal to one where it's not, and they have marijuana on them. This is going to cause problems. On the other hand, you can't do this. And act all fucking surprised. Man arrested with 50 pounds of marijuana in suitcases at Florida airport. That's a lot. Jacksonville, Florida. A man was arrested at the Jacksonville International Airport on suspicion of possessing over 25 pounds of marijuana. Christian Castro of California, where in some places marijuana is legal... Uh, was arrested Wednesday night on charges of trafficking marijuana, excess of 25 pounds, possession of over 20 grams of marijuana, smuggling marijuana into the state, and possession of marijuana with intent to sell. D- I like how he just tossed a towel over it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, let, let's, there's pictures down. Yeah, he's got like just. They x ray that shit, dude. It's, it's all casual and shit. Yeah, um, no, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna find it. Okay. I can understand if you forget if you have like a roach in your fucking pocket, you know, yeah. you got a joint or two that you left in the glove box after you got back from, you know, your weekend in D.C. or whatnot. But 50 pounds, that's a big ask to think, oops, I forgot that was in there. Yeah, no, that's inventory. And this this is going to be a weird fucking situation for for a while now because we're going to have trafficking within the same country. Yeah. Because uh, people are going to be like, well, I can get marijuana legally over here for reasonable price and take it over here and sell it illegally for an unreasonable price. That sounds like a good deal to me. I'm waiting for the inevitable turf war between like, you know how when Uber started up, the unionized cab drivers had a problem. I'm waiting for that, like for the the drug dealers, your your weed dealers to get fucking furious because they're getting muscled out. By people who like have a storefront and shit. Right, by the taxed stuff. And you're like, oh well, it's legal now, too bad. Yeah. But yeah, what Smapty points out, wasn't this the plot of Smokey and the Bandit? <laughs> it was. It was just with beer. You just recently made me watch that. It was just with my, beer. But my yes. main takeaway is I was got really sick of that song really fast because they just played it over oh, and over so much. Movie. 
Yeah, it's the thing about that is, and a lot of people don't understand about this movie is for a certain time you couldn't export certain beer to certain places in the United States. It was a thing, and it a lot of people are like, why not? It's just fucking beer. But yeah, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like smoking the bandit just with weed. Oh God, we have just we have just nailed down the remake. Yes. I was just saying we should make that movie. We have just nailed down that we, we someone option us. We've got the we have got the angle like, for the Smokey and the Bandit remake. Like Emma Stone <clears throat> who's gonna be the guy. Ryan Reynolds, maybe? Maybe, maybe. Mm. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd as the bandit? Mm, actually, yeah. Yeah, Paul Rudd could do it. Paul Rudd could do it. He might be too pretty. He might be a little too nice. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. He's a little too guy next story. He needs someone a little grungier. A little little bit bit more of an asshole. But. Yeah. Tell us in the comments who should be in yeah. the Smokey and the re- and the, the Bandit band- remake I've with coined, marijuana. I've coined him a stone, the Sally Field role. Who who should be in the Smokey and the Bandit marijuana remake? That's Chris that's Pratt? What... No, he's I'm kind of mad at Chris Pratt these days. I am too, and he's more stupid than anything else. He's He's kind of the idiot next door. Yeah. Finally, folks. Oh, we got a cringer for the last one. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck. Oh, okay. You know what? I normally just section this off to a specific set of genitalia, but pretty much anyone, if you have genitalia, take one leg and put it over the other one. Okay? Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Are you sitting comfortably? Well, you won't be in a second. And Brace. Evans. And Brace. What? As the bandit? Who? No. Chris Evans? I no. don't know. Okay. And Brace. All right. And Brace. And Brace. And go. I'll just let you bask in it for a, for a minute. Well. Woo. Just bask in it. Man, it really Let it went settle. bad for Arya Stark after she left King's Landing. Right? <laughs> In what may be a U.S. record, a Florida woman had seven syringes ah, 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 stashed inside a body orifice, which was booked into county jail late Tuesday evening. Police were called to a Burger King on May 7th. In reference to, quote, a female snarling and yelling at staff. Snarling. Snarling. That's a very specific word. Suspects, cops were told, refused to leave the Largo restaurant. When officers arrived, they detected several indicators of narcotic usage on the part of Jamie Westcott. The 35-year-old Westcott, picture it right, consented to a search of her property in person. During a pat-down, Westcott pulled away as an officer searched the right side of her groin area. The officer reportedly feeling, quote, something hard in her vagina area. While refusing to identify the area, Westcott reportedly spontaneously uttered she was fucked up. Investigators say she was given many uh, opportunities on the scene to tell deputies what comp- contraband was in her vagina. Warned that she would face additional charges, she still refused to say what it was. It was only after Westcott was at the Pinellas County lockup that she relented and removed seven syringes from her vagina. The syringes had a clear substance inside. We don't know what that was. <clears throat> There's a lot of things that could be. None of them good. The vagina is so high. <laughs> no, do you like that's a trick women do? Like they soak a tampon in vodka yes, yes. and insert it because it gets into your bloodstream faster and you get drunker faster. Yes. So imagine mm-hmm. if any one of those. Yes. Yes. I I I also love the wonderful gold seven that the smoking gun has given us here. So as if we Maybe she wouldn't leave the Burger King because she couldn't walk. (laughs) (laughs) I'ma leave. I'ma leave. God give me a second. It's gonna take a minute. Give me a minute. Give me a fucking minute. I, my God. Look, I understand you could possibly get in trouble. 
but you're already in trouble, okay? Yeah. This is not just, the, the cops aren't just going to be like, okay, you have a nice night. You're already in trouble in the Burger King. Yeah. It's time to just, Elsa, let it go. Yeah. Um, because you don't need seven doses of heroin. You have seven With needles seven. in your vagina. Seven. One, two, three, four. Oh my God, Tara, Tara, Tara. Oh my God, I'm sorry. You're going to be mad, Tara. Seven. What's in the box? What's in the fucking box? <laughs> What's in the box? Well, it's not going to culture. <laughs> I could, I could. Spoilers. I will kill you. It was right there. It was right fucking there. That's that's gonna be the fucking title this week. Hey, there's also seven heads in a duffel bag. Uh, oh wait, that's eight heads. Never mind. The the channel is like shame, shame. Get the fucking <laughs> get the bell. <laughs> Samantha Brown, you have to get out of here. Your vagina is full of syringes. <laughs> That's like SVU next week. I don't even have one. The only orifice I could possibly fit maybe seven syringes up. You couldn't pay me. You could not fucking pay me. Like, the vagina is an amazing, miraculous organ that can stretch uh -huh. to accommodate a baby. Yeah. So it, it is elastic and it can accommodate quite a lot. That doesn't mean it's storage. No. It's not for that. I I mean, uh, you could, I'd be like, hey, here is money. Put these in your holes. I would say no. No. No, thank you. Is there something else I could do for the money? No? Okay. No, thank you. No, thank you. That is, that is, no, thank you. I mean, hopefully they had the little needle covers. Hopefully. But even oh, then, no. have you ever seen those? They're not exactly foolproof. They come off right. really not easy. Seeing how many of those little meter covers are still in there. Because they're not fitted. So I'm not sure if that's better or worse, actually. Yeah. And as with most things in the vagina area, I just keep thinking of all the bacteria you oh, are God, yes. you are inviting into an area that doesn't want it. I okay, so I the first thing we've learned tonight is no, no thank you. Just say no. Yeah. To seven syringes. Sometimes you just gotta know when you're beat. Yep. Just that, that is a, my, I, my give up. I'm done. And if you find yourself in a Burger King with seven syringes in your vagina, you're probably hitting, you've hit bottom. That some life choices need to be rethunk. Yeah. I, we've learned that, uh, We've learned that marijuana laws are a little patchwork in America, but that doesn't mean you're going to get off light if you fuck them up. You can't just check bags full of that shit. Like, you can't do it. Like, are you actually insane? I mean, it's, it's like, this will be cool. I'll get through the airport. No, no problem. You do on top of it. It's fine. I'm a little insulted at the lack of effort there, you know? Yeah. Just that is some lazy shit. I have one of those sonic face washer things. I take the batteries out of that because I don't want to have the vibrating bag. Because of scene fight club. Um, we have learned that uh, YouTube was a mistake. <laughs> that we say Hi. from YouTube. Hi, YouTube. We're from a mistake where we currently are. Yep. Or uh, well, we're, will be. That says quite a bit about us, so take that as you will. Um, we've learned that porn is not a group activity without no. consent. Porn is a sometimes food. <laughs> and unless porn is your job, porn is never a work snack. And finally, we've learned 
If you really want to go to jail, the police will take you there. <laughs> that is one service that they will happily provide, yes. There's a lot of other things they won't do, but if you say, take me to jail, okie dokie, that's what they're there for. Easier ways to get out of your marriage, though. Seriously. Couldn't you, like, fake your own death or something? <laughs> At least then you don't have to piss in a room where everybody can see you. I have an ex-boyfriend who had an elaborate plan about faking his own death, should he ever need to. Yeah. Stop! I'm no! Scared. No! I'm not kidding. I don't make these things up. You are the anecdote devil! 